Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration where I've just noticed a bit of a problem. Um, this is my massive Naquium collecting facility and crushing and so on facility out in Realm of Shadows, one of the distant asteroid bases. And I've just realised that it's run out of power. And this is a rather strange thing to have happened because... Um, well, it hasn't had any problems in the past, and the way this gets power is that a spaceship will land here with a um, heat exchange with with a big um, beam receiver and and, um, on, and heat exchangers on it, and it will then take in water from the spaceship from sorry from the ground through this pipe, boil it into five thousand no ten thousand degrees steam, and pump it out down this pipe here, or five thousand degrees steam apparently sorry five thousand degrees steam, pump it out down this pipe here, where it goes into these tanks and it's turned into power that powers all of this and we've got one two three four five uh naquium mines we've got a crushing facility over here we've got other other little bits and pieces around so it's quite a big job for the uh, for the system um but up until now it's been absolutely fine we've not had any problems with this because we've got all these tanks tanks here that hold the steam while it, while the spaceship is elsewhere and will then power this all, all of this stuff so what seems to have happened is, that, yeah, this is this is interesting. So I'll get into this in a little bit more detail in a moment. But basically, a spaceship hasn't been here for quite a long time. So I think we have finally got through all of the steam and run out of power. Now, I don't think this is actually a problem. Because if we look here, we've got these six warehouses are all completely full. These belts are completely backed up all the way up to here. So we've got an enormous quantity of crushed naquium available. And if we look in these warehouses, we've got these are nearly full as well. So we've got a decent amount of uncrushed naquitite available as well. So there's lots and lots of stuff available in these buffers. So when a ship comes in, the ship will then directly power the base because these poles and I think the all of this stuff I think is close enough that it will just link in straight into the into the ship's power system. So it's not going to be a problem bootstrapping the system back up again, and we can then start pumping the steam out and fill all these tanks back up. What's a little bit weird is that this, is, this has happened at all, because I thought there was enough enough storage here for, for this not to happen. Um, but it turns out, if we go and have a look at the other end, <clears throat> over in Norvis orbit, we see something that I've never seen before. This warehouse is completely full of Naquium. This ship is was well, not full of Naquium, but it's got a decent amount in it. It's it's sitting here trying, and, and it's stopped because it can't unload the Naquium. This ship has stopped because it can't unload the uh, the crushed Naquitite. If we look out here, then we're probably going to see all of basically all of the um, Naquium related ships are stacked up here, waiting to go into Norbit orbit. There's there's none en route between Realm of Shadows and Kalidus. There's none. Uh, they're all they are literally all just stacked up here waiting to go in and unload all of their supplies so in a way i now actually have enough naquium which is a bizarre feeling because i've never had that i've never been at that point before even if we look on tulip there's no ship there so yeah we've got to the point my my upgrades to the naquium production facilities are sufficient that at my current rate of usage we've got more than we know what to do with and that is amazing because we've not managed that before and so I've achieved this by out in Realm of Shadows. It's not a huge amount of stuff, really, but I've upgraded along here. I've doubled the number of these crushers, so we're producing literally twice as much. I've also come in and I've put in more trains here, and that means we can get a bit more being brought through from, from the mines at once, because there's now more trains to do it. And I quite significantly upped the... Um, the requ requested amount here to 30,000 instead of, I think it was on... I don't remember what it was on before, but I've increased that quite a bit, and I've increased the max number of trains. So the idea is now that as soon as, the, if this starts to get remotely low, then we'll have two or three or maybe even four trains trying to bring more na more naquitite along here to be to be processed. And that's how I've managed to get this up, these to basically full, and all of this to the point where it's now happy, and we've got loads of everything, and this is <clears throat> this is great. Things are working. And so I actually don't care that we've completely run out of power here because there is enough of everything backed up and that the next ship will be able to fill up with no problems. And that will fill the steam tanks back up and get everything running again. So I don't think it's actually a worry. Let's have a quick look at the um, at the, these stations. Well, are, the, are these all basically full? Yeah, these are all completely full. And that, bring, that means we've got a total of 17,000 Naquium there. 17,000 there and there and there so we have enough naquit we have everything is full basically and, and all and that sort of and that everything is full 
Cygnus has pushed all the way back to Norvis orbit, and so we have crazy, crazy amounts of Naquium available. It's just, it's just, we're just, just full. So let's have a look over at where the Naquium is being used, shall we? <clears throat> so now over here, we've got, yeah, we've got full Naquium down here. We've got, we've made up all of the Naquium cubes we need for stuff. What's going on here? Okay, there's a bit of a shortage of one of these energy scientists. So that's something I'm going to need to look into. Down here, we've got um, this. Where does that even go? I don't know. Looking down here at the uh, at where we're making the Astro Science Four, we've got plenty of all of this. These are working, but they're they're working busily, but they're they're uh, they don't have any shortages. They're just a bit slow. I do need to make these a lot faster, but at the moment they are they are working, and we've got to the point now that we have. 1,300 of these catalogs. So that's it's going pretty well. As I say, I do need to come along here and put some more speed modules in here. That'll put a lot more load on the system and things will start to struggle a little bit more. But it will make things... But it should it should, fix, should fix things up and we should we should be alright with this with this huge back supply of Nacoin we have available. Now, I did realise last time, and there's a lot of corrections... I made the corrections here, but I haven't actually gone around and implemented them yet. So... Previously, in the last stream, I, I think I talked about this in the last video, actually. We had a problem where the um, Nequium Tesseracts were coming out of here, and they'd backed up all the way along here and jammed this belt up. So we were having problems due to that. So I needed to come in, and I was a I was able to fix that by um, essentially by putting in by reading off the belt here, passing the signal up, and then telling this to stop loading if there's any Nequium Tesseracts here. The problem with that was that meant this filled up. And then we stopped making them, which meant they stopped being passed around through these now to be deconstructed belts and splitters to here, which would then put them into this machine to make the Naquim processors. So we don't have a supply of Naquim processors at the moment. So what I've done is I've got rid of that bit and instead I'm branching off down here and here. So now the normal um, Holmium processors go on to the left side of the belt and the Naquium Tesseracts will go on to the right side of the belt in our, enabling them to make the Naquium cube up here. So there's a bit of tidying up. I need to pull off some of these um, some of these processors off here just to, to let this through. And obviously I need to replace all of these, um, put these put these splitters in and so on. But basically this is kind of okay. This is, this, some little, little fixes need to be done here, but basically this is going to work, uh, I think. And as I say, I need to speed these up. So that's, that's, that's a fairly big deal. But essentially the problem is now of throughput and just putting in more machines rather than anything more drastic and that's something I can deal with. So that's going really really well. I feel like Naquium is sort of cracked and the funny thing is on, on Tulip I haven't actually been out to put in any more um, any more of the productivity modules yet. I've been making quite a lot of them but I've not been not been out to put more in um, so we've still got a lot of these machines with the tier threes in them and there's a tier three in that one as well and so on so these do all still need quite a big upgrade i still need about four to bring 400 productivity modules over here but at the moment the system is is okay we've interesting oh yeah we've used up right so we've processed all of the all of the crushed naquium naquitites have been brought in and processed we can't get any more until the machine at the other end unloads um unloads all of the naquium ingots it's got and refills with um with Naquium, with crushed Naquitite to bring out here. So, so yeah, this is kind of expected. But there's another 1,400 um, Naquium in there, which is a lot. That's like enough to keep the system happy for a little while. So, we, yeah, the problem, the problem is all due to us not using the Naquium up fast enough, which is a good problem to have, I feel. So yeah, for now, and I'm going to say definitely, emphatically, for now, because I know this is going to change quite soon, and we're going to, I am going to still have problems with it later, probably. But for now, Naqu the Naquium supply is fixed and sorted, and that's amazing. So the other big thing I've been playing with is down here on Norvis, where um, there've been basically the. Because I've been making so many um, so many modules. In fact, let's 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 go through this in in, in order, re in in reverse order. So back in back in Norvis orbit over here, I've been trying to make lots and lots of productivity module sixes in order to finish off that Naquium processing facility, and that has been giving me all kinds of issues with specifically with red circuits. Now that's okay at the moment. We have a decent number of red circuits because of what I'll get onto in a minute. So. We need 400 tier 6 productivity modules, which are going in here, and so far I've got 175. I had 50 at the start of the last stream, so that's I've made some improvements there. But basically, this is just waiting for the um, for the modules to trickle through, trickle all the way up, because they're not being made very quickly. Because just because it's it's a it's 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 an exponential process. So you, where you need um, 
to make one tier six you need three tier fives and you need nine tier fours and you need 27 tier three and so on all the way down to needing a bajillion tier ones so the system just can't can't really keep up with that but the, but it's just now it's just a throughput problem of trying to make all of these whereas before it was a problem with uh, supplies with the um with not enough red circuits coming through so in order to fix that yes i went to norvis and I did a big upgrade of the Red Circuit production facility. Um, and I did this in a very lazy way. I'm not, not ashamed to admit it. I came in here and I put in... I, took, I upgraded all of the belts from yellow, the yellow belts that we had before to the blue belts that you now see before you. Then I dropped in um, tier 3 productivity modules into... Oh, and I, upgrade, I upgraded all of these machines to, um, to tier 3 assembly machines instead of the tier 2s. And I filled them up with uh, productivity modules. So now these are all producing um, plus 32% productivity. Plus, and there's also a plus 32% productivity from the, um, from the copper wire machines. So we're now, used, we're now getting um, 1.3 times 1.3, which is going to be about... About 1.8, 1.7, 1.8 times as many, or so almost twice as many um, circuits out for e for each uh, for each bit of copper that goes in. And I've done the same down here as well. And act and um, in order to keep this running reasonably well, I then also came in and I dropped in these um, product the, these uh, beacons in order to make or in order to ensure that we're still making all of the stuff fairly quickly. So these beacons up here quite neatly cover nearly all <laughs> only nearly all of the um of the red circuit production the one down here only yeah this one only only really covers this 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 side of the green circuit production the other side is a bit neglected which is why we're getting a lot more red circuits coming down here than we are here and is why these trains are out of balance i really need to put in some splitters to to, to fix this i should probably do that um, but yeah, the theory, in, in, the theory is that we're now getting quite a lot more red circuits out than we were before. And also we've cut down on the amount of copper that's required to produce all those red circuits. And that's very important because another issue I was having, or another issue that, that was causing, and this wasn't an issue I should hasten to add until I started making all of these um, modules and, and getting through enormous quantities of circuits. Another problem I had was... Daylight, please. There we go. Was there was a massive shortage of copper. So if we look up here, we've got we've actually got up to 79 copper now. So this is recovering quite nicely, at least partly because of that those fixes I've made, and mm, still a bit of a shortage there as well. So we're now we're now churning through the copper here and making making loads and loads of it, which is great. In order to keep that happy, I've added in. <laughs> right, so we I'll get back to the uh, the core processing in a minute, but in order to keep the copper happy, I've gone out to gear often and I put in this mining facility here that's just churning out just pure copper. Um and in theory <laughs> it hasn't actually worked quite as well as it should because it jam it jams up every so often, but the, the plan is that this now means there's a lot more copper coming through here. Um we fill this train up with a lot more copper and a lot less stone and um what do we call it? Uh, this this thing, these things. I'm going to take that out because that's causing problems. Um, the the problem I was having with this, there was so much copper going through to put. There wouldn't be enough core fragments and stone coming through to fill up a complete train load with it. So in order to sort that out, I've now got only copper going into the first four, and the core fragments and stone, and a bit of copper going into the bottom one. And as you can see, this means that now these ones fill up with just copper. These ones fill up with a bit of everything. And in order to make sure that we don't have an, we don't, we don't get to the point where this just completely fills up with copper, and we have the same problem where you can't finish a stack. And if you can't finish a stack, the train will never leave. I've got these monitoring to see how much copper is inside the um, warehouse, and only filling it up to like 80% full. So the um, the core fragments and the stone get passed more or less straight through. Um, to the point where, and then there's, there's enough to fill up the train, like 7, 49, 50, like that, so that the train will leave. I've also put in a second um, gear often spaceship to, in order to provide a little bit more throughput on, on the copper, because we're getting through enormous quantities of copper. So there we go, second one goes in, spaceship leaves. Is the other one? No, the other one must have just left before that. Okay, so you can see we're getting a lot. We're getting some excellent throughput here now. We can, and this system seems to balance quite nicely. And because of the extra space in here, and the way and the way the system balances, it, it does mean that there is there is always just about enough that we can tr we can trickle a little bit more in and just fill these up to the point where the, the ship is then ready to go. Uh, the train's ready to go. Sorry, I don't know how some of that managed to end up in this chest in this in this one here. I don't I don't know what happened there. But I'm gonna fix all of these to be just doing copper so that'll never happen again there we go 
Uh, that is the right way around, isn't it? Whitelist copper. Yes, it is. Excellent. So now, as you can see, this has filled up really, really quickly. So we've got loads of copper coming through from this mine. So these we're now ready for another another spaceship to come back here. But if we look at the, the map, you can see gear off and core one there and gear off and core blimey, which is the second one there. I'm going to let them run for a bit and see whether that um, solves the gear off and problem. Uh, whether, sorry, whether that keeps gear off and empty because, yeah, we do need a lot of copper. So yes, we do need a lot of copper, but in order to make sure we don't end up with too much of it, I've got what I think is quite a nice system running down down here, where I've linked up all of the warehouses bop, 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 with the green cable, which then goes across here, down and down to... It includes these warehouses down here, comes down to here. And so we can see that in our to storage system in total, we have 23,000 copper. Now, And I'm, I'm then subtracting 75,000 from that, because that's the amount I want to have. If there's more than 75,000 copper in the system on Norvis, then I want the ships to stop bringing it in from gear often because that means I've got enough and it might clog up. So at this point, we're then transmitting that using this um, using this transmitter. We're transmitting the the um, the copper minus 75,000 off to gear often, where it's being received here, and that's being translated into an O signal so a copper for every copper we're putting in one o so we've got cop copper o's go being transmitted into the spaceship and if we look at the spaceship these spaceships are told not to leave unless uh where is it oh here we go unless o is less than zero so if we're getting if, if there's a breakdown in communications for a power crisis, then we won't. Then O will be zero, so, it, so the spaceship won't take off. And if there's more than 75,000 copper on Norvis, then we'll be getting a positive number through. So again, the ship won't take off. So we've got the safety safety mechanism in here that means that if there's more copper than we know what to do with, the ship won't won't leave and just won't fly over there. And Hopefully, there's enough buffer in the system over there that even if we do have a cut, the, both the ships go when they when they shouldn't, they'll or have gone before they realise they shouldn't rather, then there'll be enough buffer space to unload from these ships because we've got like we've got each of these carries 40 stacks. That's 80 stacks per, per 80 stacks per warehouse where we're unloading. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's 160 stacks per warehouse, and, and we've got enough space to buffer that. So that isn't a problem. Okay, so that is. Um, that is now doing, um, no, not Norvis Orbit, Norvis itself. So that is ensuring that we've got a nice supply of copper coming in. Here it is, in fact. These, this is the ship that's just arrived from the first one from Gear Off, and you can tell because it's packed with copper. So these come in here. They unload the copper, the core fragments. There's obviously a little bit of core fragment left over from the um, from before, but now it's basically just copper and, and a load of stone as well. So we can dump that out down here. This goes down this belt. We've got two belts here to improve the throughput a little bit. Then that comes up here. The copper is just filtered off to this side. And the reason I've done this is that sometimes we have more than one resource coming through. So if we have copper and stone or copper and coal or something like that, then we using because of this, we can still get potentially get a bit more throughput through here. So maybe we can get two belts. We can get a belt of copper and a belt of stone or a belt of coal, ideally. Um, it's not quite that neat, but in, in theory, they, they, it may well allow a little bit more throughput. So I thought it was worth putting that in. So yes, that's working nicely and it's working so nicely I decided to do the same thing for stone so up here we've uh, for coal sorry for coal so up here we've got another we've got again these are all linked in with the green cables as you can see we've got um, a belt of coal potentially coming in from here um, we've got the coal being transmitted down here again subtracting 75,000 from it transmitting it off and that goes to a new outpost on Greenleaf now this one isn't quite as effective as the the other one because it's a much smaller planet, so the uh, the core fragments come out a lot slower. But we've still got a, a massive coal mine up here, so that's digging up the uh, the not quite so free coal. Why are you sitting sitting here? Have I have I missed something on this? Let's have a quick look at this and try and work out why this is still sat here. Um, so you're feeding into so where, where's the one that says to go to Norvis orbit? It's that one. So that's here. So it's down here. So we're saying if we got oh. That should say that should say lots of coal, coal, lots of coal, lots of coal, lots of coal. If there's more than fifteen thousand coal, wait, no. Let's change that to coal anyway. But this one should also say if coal. Oh, it does say if coal is greater than ten thousand. Hmm. So we've got if coal is greater than ten thousand, and if planet place is five one four. Yep, and if. Uh, that's it. Feed into here. And if trains equals two. So we've got all those being correct. Um, then. 
Oh, this is hard. To, this wiring is hard to follow. Uh, then this this links to and if O is greater than is less than zero. Okay. Oh, do we not have? No, we do have the O signal being fed in here. We've got O is. Oh, is seventeen thousand? Oh, have we got an ah? Okay, this is this is this is the system working as designed. I think let's let's check this. But I think this means if we go back to Norvis, um, yeah, if we look here, yes, we see ninety-two thousand coal being fed in there, and so it's feeding out seventeen thousand. So so we have ninety-two thousand coal. We have the right amount of coal already. We have it, or we have plenty of coal. So the ship is waiting there until there's a coal shortage on Norvis. That's really quite satisfying actually, because that shows that the system is working. On the for overflow as well as for underflow, so that's really good. So we've we've stopped coal coming in because these warehouses have all got like lots in them. So we're happy about that. The problem that we're having here is that we have too much stone. Um, as you can see, these stone warehouses they're all full. Nothing's being fed into them, and this has caused the entire um, core fragment processing to back up. And this is part of the reason why I pulled things like copper processing off to their own separate systems so we bring in just basically just copper and a tiny bit of core fragment um, because that means we still have a, the supply of copper coming in even though this is backed up and this is the hope is that this will cause this to balance out a little bit but we're just not getting through the stone fast enough now stone is used for a couple of things really it's basically used for making it into glass here which then goes off to, which a lot of this then goes into a rocket and is taken off to tulip to be turned into um, yes glass down here uh, to be turned into um, Vulcan to be turned into vitalic acid in order to be turned into um, naquium. But we've got so much naquium at the moment that we've... In fact, the na so the naquium surplus has now forced back to causing a, a stone surplus here on, on Norvis, which is a bizarre problem to have. Um, but at the moment, there's not an enormous amount I can do about it. Keeping these things in, all these things in balance is actually surprisingly difficult. Now, I'm hoping that all of these extra things, so producing the coal separately, producing the copper separately, and potentially I could produce iron separately as well. How much iron have we got? Uh, we've still got 270,000, so iron at the moment is not a problem. But in theory, I could also produce the iron from somewhere separately. I would do that from an asteroid belt, dig it up there and ship it back here. Hopefully that is going to reduce the amount of core fragment usage we have, and therefore mean that stone is being produced in smaller proportions compared to everything else but we shall have to wait and see how that goes um it's still a bit early days on that at the moment but we'll we shall see but i'm now yeah i'm producing the other things that i was short of on their own so that's that's a big improvement i did have a little bit of a fail when i came to do all this stuff so i took off from very, very too many places and i flew over to here and we've now only got 43,000 rocket fuel in each of these booster tanks so my um, personal spaceship is now not capable of taking off because there's not enough fuel in it now it's not very short i reckon that these need about i think it takes 49 rocket fuel out of each booster tank to take off from norvis so we need six for 30,000 to come in that's only that's only slightly more than one one uh fluid wagon and I think I have yes, I have a load being dropped off here. So I just need to find a way, to, and so I just need to find a way to get some out of these tanks and bring it over to to here to fill this fill this spaceship up a little bit. I may just run a long pipe to be honest and call it ugly, but okay, and just top top it up a little bit, and then I'll be able to escape. So it's not a serious problem, but it is an annoying one, and it's a little bit silly, and I shouldn't have done that. Speaking of spaceships being a bit dumb and not doing what they're supposed to, <laughs> if I have a look up here, Norvis Orbit again, these two spaceships, I've made some sort of pro problem, it, some sort of mistake when I was programming them up. These were doing the, the thing where you just get that constant spaceship noise of launching and landing and launching and landing and launching and landing. I think what ended up happening was I said, if you have no... Um, Oh, no, it's not that. I was going to say, I thought I was... My, my guess when I was thinking about it after I stopped playing was that I got the... The system says if you have no um, no meteorite defense ammo, then immediately launch and go back to Norvis orbit in order to refill. But that isn't the problem because these, these have got loads in. So it, it, what it must be is that they were launching and not going off to where it is they're supposed to go to. So they weren't flying off to the asteroid field and to... I don't know. So next stream I'm going to take a look at these, get them fixed up again and get them working properly. And hopefully that's going to be fairly easy. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. Finally, I've made a bit of a change up here here this is where the spaceships refuel the core core mining and the ore transport spaceships the ones with the trains in refuel so this i put in some extra tanks here so there's a bit more fuel available in storage to be dumped into the ship so hopefully they won't linger here for quite as long um 
and also some of them have x uh, 550 is okay so yeah this ship should like re refuel fairly quickly and then be ready to head off to wherever it is it goes to i've, I've, I've no idea um it doesn't really matter but in order to yeah, so in order to make this fill up a bit more quickly i put in some extra tanks here to give it a bit more space and i've also run this pipe around here and this pipe across sorry this pipe across here to bring more fuel in over this way so instead of it all just going around the one pipe there's now three pipes that are all trying to refuel the same same area pumping into the same tank so hopefully we'll get these the tanks will fill up a bit more quickly and we'll be able to refuel refuel the ship a bit more effectively now it has occurred to me that doing this with rocket I, i'm getting to the point now where rocket fuel is starting to be a problem so we're generating the rocket fuel is being made on a sailor brought over here in these ships where we then dump it out into these tanks and pass it around and for a long time that has been absolutely fine there it's gone um because we've been get we've been producing the rocket fuel fast enough it's not been a problem but if i look at a sailor now we'll find out that these actually we you know these tanks are have a reasonable amount in them but they're going to dump out fairly quickly into this spaceship the problem we, we've got to the problem where I don't think I'm now really producing the rocket fuel quite fast enough. Although that said, looking around here, there does seem to be a lot of fuel available now. So maybe, maybe it was just a bit of a hiccup, and I drained and I drained all the fuel through by having all the ships backed up and then all refueling in very very quick succession. I don't know, but I would quite like to switch all of my. Um, basically, I'd like to have a big project where I go through and switch all of the core ships. Um, that's these these ones over to using antimatter booster tanks for liftoff i could upgrade the engines to antimatter engines as well i'm not sure whether they're the same size and shape i think they might be bigger in which case that's going to be difficult but i reckon i could probably pull all of these booster tanks out and replace them with maybe two or three antimatter booster tanks and because antimatter is so much more energy dense that'd be plenty to lift off with and if i can whack in an antimatter engine um uh, antimatter engine as well then I only have one type of fuel to worry about and it'll massively modernize these ships and make and make the ref the, most importantly it'll make the refueling process much much faster um, because you don't need to transfer as much fuel across and well that's it really it'll just make the refueling process much faster and I won't oh I won't need to transport as much um, up much fuel up from a sailor instead we can make it either make it in Norbis orbit over here in the big antimatter production facility which is at the moment keeping up no problem because we're not using very much of it or possibly just move this off to Kalidus orbit where there's a lot more power available um, do it all there and then ship enormous quantities of antimatter back to Norvis in a ship a lot like this one but with antimatter booster tanks in it instead so we carry carry the antimatter back instead um, this is all a little bit up in the air at the moment I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do it may be one of those things I just put off for a little while but but we shall see um, yes so I think so yes this is the last the last run I haven't made any sort of major progress down the sort of down the science lines although I think catching having Naquim catch up is quite an achievement but I went around I did a lot of improvements to all of the infrastructure that's bringing resources in whether that's copper coal red circuits Naquim as well actually to be honest so there's been some big improvements in there that is now putting me in a position where I feel I've probably got the supplies now to make a push for getting all the getting the final deep space science 4 stuff up and running and pushing on to starting to make um, all the final stuff like um, not teleport it like uh, like going for this the game for the spaceship victory building up the distortion drive and then push for the push for the actual spaceship victory. So I think I'm quite close to that. I'll probably pick up all of the other um, non-infinite researchers as well, just for just you know for the hell of it, because why not? Um, but I feel like I'm I'm doing very well on on the the approach to to the to the to the end game essentially at this point. So I, I feel like there's a not a huge amount left for this before the spaceship victory. So thank you for um, watching for this long. There's been quite a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, it's been very busy. Please make sure you're subscribed. I've hit nine. I've, I've passed 900 subscribers now, which is amazing. I'm, I want a real push for a thousand, and I think I'm hoping I, I can get there in sort of just a, just a few weeks. Um, so you, I, I need your help for that. Please subscribe to the channel. Um, come along to the stream on Wednesday if you want to watch me getting the um, all the science up and running and and fixing all these little problems I've been talking about, like this, the uh, the silly little um, meteor defense ships down here, the um, and and my my self-inflicted fuel shortage down on Norvis all those sort of things I, uh, they, those need fixing and then I'll be trying to build essentially what's going to be a, probably a bigger version of this ship that's going to go much faster have much more power I'm going to have to use antimatter reactors for it I'm pretty sure of that now um, 
and then build that up and head off and do the uh, and try and get that spaceship, spaceship victory done. So it's not going to all happen next week, but it's going to be the first steps of it. <laughs> so yes, please come along to that stream and join join me for that. There's the Minecraft streams on Mondays as well, so we're uh, we've got bits of automation going on going on in that. You can come along and watch me rage at the at Minecraft for being a bit stupid and inconsistent with how it does things, which is I'm sure that's always entertaining. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and the summary videos, of course, and and I hope you uh, enjoyed the um, the Arcosphere tutorial video that came out on Friday, um, with me going going through how to how to use all of this stuff. If you want to know how to do Arcos how Arcospheres work, what on earth all of this nonsense is all about, and how I've managed to sort of wrestle them into con under control, that's a good video to watch. It'll give you a, an, an idea of how well how I've done it. I'm not saying it's the way to do it. I'm not even saying it's the best way to do it. I'm just saying it's how I've done it, and it seems to work. So yeah, go and check that video out if you're interested in Arcospheres or space exploration or the sound of my voice um, I'm gonna hopefully get more GTA videos happening but they're so time-consuming to build I basically haven't got time to do that and everything else so they they've they've, um, they've been the lowest priority unfortunately but otherwise that's everything that's going on on the channel I say make sure you stick around and thank you for watching I'll see you next time <sighs> I'm like 30,000 rocket fuel short, that's not very much.